color animations. This is what we're gonna talk about today. How to get color A to smoothly transition to animate to color B and back. It's not hard. And I'm gonna show you the tools that you have at your disposal with Reactor inside the ZY, okay? So I'm inside Unity and let's just prep the scene for a simple color animation. All right, so I'm gonna create a image. This will be a quick tutorial. Let's set the canvas to screen space camera, just to have it here. Let's enter this image and let's update the event system to the new input system. All right. If you want to add a color animator, animator, just add component, write color. And here you'll see all the animator, or actually all the components that are available in your project for color animation. You have a simple color animator. This is the most basic of all. Then you have a text color, uh, actually no a UI container color animator and UI selectable color animator. These are some more advanced components. I'm gonna show the UI container one in this video. And you have three color targets. You can add other color tar targets for sprites, for materials and so on, and use these animators. But we're not gonna cover that topic now. We're just gonna use them and sh see how they work. When I'll, I'll add a color animator here on this image, you will see that an image color target will also get added. So let's click. And right away, an image color target has been added. And the color target for this color animation is this. You can also change it, and I'm, I'm gonna show you later how. But let's dive in the animator. The previous video showed you how to, uh, what settings a UI animator has. And of course you have your animation tab where you have your animation settings and your callbacks. The callbacks are the same. Behavior on start and on enable, they are the same. You can play forward, reverse, set the, fr the, the from value or the to value. Again, you can do that here. And of course you can set an animator name and I'm gonna say um, special color, whatever. All right, and in the animation, the color settings are the ones that differ, but start delay, duration loops, loop delay, play mode, ease mode, ease or animation curve, and also these are all the same. They work in the same way. Let's focus on these settings. So if you say color from current value, it's not really okay. You should go with start value. And the start value is the value that you've set here in the editor. And I'm gonna use, let's say a yellow, something like that. Let's use this yellow for now because it's um, a complementary color to the awful blue from the main camera. And here we have some settings. We can, we, we can set a hue shift. The hue is this one, is the one that goes, let's go for a HSV hue saturation value although we use the HSL uh, model because I think it's better than this one. All right, so we can change this, all right? We can subtract or we can add hue. So let's say if I say 180, it will be around here because the, 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 um, the hue goes from zero, from zero to 360. It's in a, in a circle. It's actually a cylinder, but that doesn't matter. So let's say minus 180, it should be a uh, complementary color. Yeah, something like that. So it's around here. Yeah. So let's just enter play mode. Let's set the duration 4.5 seconds. And let's just play. And you will see that we can animate, we can smoothly, smoothly animate from one color to another. Just let's see the animation. And this is how it looks. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the color better right here. So let's go back and yeah, that's how it, it works. Of course you can set a different hue and it will change. You can also change the saturation. I selected this color specifically so we can add more saturation to it. 
So let's go with maximum saturation and back. Or you can desaturate. Basically, you're getting the color out, so we'll, we'll um, have a gray color. So let's play. And this way you can set some items. Let's say if they're disabled, you can set them to be gray. And when they get enabled, you can just uh, reverse the animation and set the color. You can also do that. It all depends on your particular use case. Another thing that you can do, you can add, you can shade or tint. Shade adds black, so it goes darker. Tint adds white, it goes um, a lot to a lighter color. So lightness does that. If you say minus, I don't know, 20% here, you're adding black. So we'll have a darker color. Let's play. There you go. And let's reverse. If you go crazy and you say minus 100%, you will have full black because you add too much black. Usually around, it actually depends on the color. Let's say minus 50%. Yeah. You can also see a preview here. So let's say minus 30%. Yeah, this should be obvious. And of course, let's uh, go with tint. So we are adding white to the color. And let's go plus 24%. And it's whiter. Or maybe plus 15%. Again, it's whiter. If you say 100%, it will be pure white because you added too much white. It's very easy. The last one, the, the last thing that you can animate is the alpha offset. Notice that the, their, their names are offset. Basically, you're adding or subtracting from your initial color. This way, you use a, um, a base color and you add changes to it. All right. So let's say minus 20%. And you will notice that this white line that represents the transparency, the alpha value, <clears throat> sorry, uh, will lower. So let's play and it lowered. And let's say minus 100%, basically it will be invisible because it will be fully transparent and we can reverse it. Okay, uh, some other crazy things that you can do. You can say a custom value. So I'd like it to go to a red color. You can also do that. You can say ping pong. Ping pong goes from color from A to B and back. So basically it will go to red and immediately back to yellow. This is very useful if you want to show something. Let's say uh, 0.2. So this is very fast. And let's say uh, six loops. And this will be something like that, very quick and easy. If you wanna get the attention of the user or the player, depending on what you're building, hey, look here. You can also use a spring, let's say zero loops, 0.5. And again, this will be a bit more crazy or maybe a shake animation. And for a normal, a normal color, let's say you can also set an animation curve and make it take longer before it goes to the final color. So something like that and back. Or maybe uh, you wanted to have some, uh, something like this before it settles in. So you may want something like this. It all depends on your use case. So. These are the components for a color animation. Now, let me show you some use cases so you can see why it's useful. I'm gonna create a container. So this would be my container. Let's make it as big as the screen. Why can't I see it? All right. And I'm gonna add a UI container component. Then right away I have a UI container. Let's enter play mode. As you may know from the previous videos, a UI container has a show and a hide, so I can uh, hide and I can show. Let's also disable the game object. And you can see it here that it gets disabled, right? All right. Actually, I'm gonna leave the game object. Now I'd like to add some animations to it. 
let's say I want to darken the, the background when this container is shown. So I'm going to create an image. I'm going to make it as big as the screen. I'm going to make it dark. And maybe, how do I want it? Something like that. Let's say 50% dark. So this is my image component. I'm not going to use the color animator because we have some specialized, some more advanced uh, color animations that are directly connected to show and hide. Uh, basically, I'm saving you a lot of work just by using this component. So I'll say add component, color, and I'll say UI container color animator. This is just the same as the color animator, the basic one, but it's connected to the UI container to show and hide in a more complex way. Again, it uses a color target. Let's just sort this out. Let's put it here. And you have a show. This is one color animator and hide the second color animator. And let's look into it. So when you show, I would like to have transparency zero and then transparency is the, the offset, right? And for hide, I'm just gonna reverse this. So I'll say from the current value, whatever value that is, to zero transparency. And that's it. This will be my background, right? So let's say I want my container to be hidden instantly when uh, the game starts. Just gonna press play and the background should be invisible. And it is. I'm gonna press show and now I have a way to darken the animation and hide. Of course, we should also not disable this. So show and hide. Should disable this for now. So let's enter play mode just so we can see the animation. Show and hide. The hide animation is very fast. I don't know why. Let me check it out. It's 0.3 seconds. Oh, yeah, because this should be at zero. Yeah, that's why. I didn't like that it wasn't a smooth animation. It was instant hide and we're not going so show and hide. All right. So you have this smooth transition if you have something behind. Let's say, uh, let's create another image. Where is it? All right. So you have this behind the, the canvas. When we hide the container, this becomes visible. When you show it, it just hides it a bit. All right. Another use case. Let's say you have a certain area or maybe something that you want to um, tell the user that is interactable. Usually this would be a button, but not always. So I'm going to create a uh, image right here. And I'm going to say um, info box, for example. And now I'm going to use a special, another animator. Uh, this will be a simple color animator. And let's say your initial color should be maybe this. And when you move your mouse over, let's say it will be a uh, green color. So let's say start value to a custom value. Actually, let's go with a hue. Yeah, let's. Yeah, this is good. So it's just a hue animation. Let's enter play mode and let's see it in action. I think the container will hide. Yeah. So let's show. And when we play, this is how it, it looks, basically. All right, let's add some interactive, interactable features to it. When the pointer enters its uh, bounding box and when it exits the bounding box, let's say I want to play the animation from A to B, so from uh, blue to green, when the, when the pointer is inside and when the pointer exits, I want to reverse the animation. You will see that it is a few clicks away. Um, let's just say show let's play an animation all right so here i want to add some interactivity to, to this i'm going to say uh, box color 
color something like that it really doesn't matter i'm just adding this so i'm gonna say uh animator module this is a special module that allows you to add a lot of interactions i'm gonna describe it in a different tutorial you'll just see how it works so i'll say i would like to control this animation called box color you remember we we named it right here and i will say play forward and play in reverse i want these two actions of course we have several other actions available so i'll say when do i want to play forward this animation well let's add a trigger when to play forward and I'll say provider id when the pointer enters that's it so when the pointer enters this uh, image it will play the animation forward so from start from from the from um, value to the to value and for the reverse i will say again pointer exit that's it that's pretty much it so we have pointer enter play the animation forward pointer e exit play the animation in reverse that's pretty much it let's test it out we will see a fade animation for the background didn't we see it happened so fast all right and now i'm going to move the mouse inside it just played the animation and out of course we can also preview what's happening here so pointer uh two triggers were i'm actually four uh two triggers were added pointer enter and pointer exit and you will see there when they're triggered so pointer enter pointer exit and you can see it plays the animation forward and then in reverse back and of course you can link a lot of other things let's say um I would like to have another animation, a scale animation. So I'll say UI animator. Um, let's also connect it here. And I don't know, let's play with the scale from start value to 1.2. Let's make it a bit bigger. So just by doing that, now we have a scale animation. The system is, is, is insane how fast you can add animation, customize them link them and check it out yeah that that's it uh this is a bit much so let's say animation so point 0.2 seconds offset yeah i was a bit idiotic here so this this is how it should look uh, again these types of uh, combinations can be used with various things uh, let's say you also want a rotation so let's say rotate to 45 degrees in uh, 0.2 seconds and let's say out back and you get the idea so i'm just messing with things so these were the the color animations they are also used for buttons um let's add a button let's add a simple button from the ui menu um simple yeah, here we have a simple button. And is it centered? No, it's not. And here it uses a uh, UI. Ah, there we go. We have a color animator. Let's just change this color to a green. And here we have one, two, three, four, five color animations. Each animation set for the button state. So this is a UI selectable color animator. If we have, if the UI container color animator has two states, show and hide, so basically you have two animations for, uh, you, you're controlling two color animations, here you're controlling five. And let's enter play mode. And you will see that the highlighted adds some uh, lightness, I can see here. Pressed adds some, um, adds, uh, adds some shade. So I don't know if you can see the color change because it's quite subtle, but there you go and i'm gonna press it and now it's selected i'm gonna deselect and let's say let, let's set the button not interactable so it will go with the disabled animation let's go like this so there you go and you can even preview the states for a button again this is going to be in the next video so we have normal and we play this animation 
highlight it and replace this animation. And I, I can also show you, let's say, so this adds 10% lightness. Let's go with 40%, all right? So normal, and this is now the highlighted state. Pressed, selected, and disabled. So that's why color animations are important because they make your, um, they make your UI look a lot more polished and the, the, the system will help you create it very fast. So highlighted, pressed, normal. And of course, I can also control it with a mouse or even with touch. I have a touch sensitive screen, so I can click it with a finger. Or you press, uh, yeah, let's go like that. Yeah, I can also uh, click enter, I actually return and the button will animate as expected, as if something is hitting it, not the mouse. The mouse is uh, here. It's, yeah. All right. So that's it for the color animations. Uh, I hope I was explicit enough. Uh, I was clear enough on, on how how it works, and that you 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 put it to good use in your projects. All right. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.